Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. First and foremost, our thoughts and prayers are with all the victims of this, our staff, our students, and our entire community at Great Mills High School. At this time, Sheriff Cameron will be speaking, along with Governor Hogan, who will be speaking, as well as Dr. Smith, Superintendent for St. Mary's County Public Schools. After everyone's done speaking, there will be a few minutes for brief questions. And at this time, I would also ask if there is anyone that has any information on what happened today to please call the hotline the FBI has set up. That number is 1-800-CALL-FBI. I'll turn it over now to Sheriff Tim Cameron. Good afternoon. I'd like to reiterate that my thoughts and prayers are with the victims of today's shooting, the students and staff of Great Mills High School, and our community. I said this before and I will say it again. This is something that we train, practice, and in a reality we hope would never come to fruition. It is our worst nightmare. Today at approximately 7.55 a.m., Great Mills High School student Austin Wyatt Rollins, age 17, produced a handgun while in hallway F in Great Mills High School and shot a Great Mills High School student, a female who was 16, and a Great Mills High School student, a male who was 14. School resource officer, Deputy First Class Blaine Gaskell, was alerted and immediately responded and engaged the shooter. DFC Blaine Gaskell fired at the shooter and what is described to me is almost simultaneously the shooter fired. First aid was immediately initiated by deputies, troopers, and school nursing staff to include a tourniquet placed on a shooting victim and CPR. There is an indication that a prior relationship existed between the shooter and the female victim. We are working as we speak to determine if that was, and if so, the extent of that, and if it was part of the motive for this shooting. We continue to interview witnesses, collect forensic evidence from multiple crime scenes, and examine the shooter's electronic devices and all aspects of social media and social media traffic. The 14-year-old male student was transported to MedStar St. Mary's Hospital, is in stable condition there. The 16-year-old female student was transported to PG shock trauma, and she is in ICU with life-threatening critical injuries. I would ask that anyone that has any information, please call the hotline that's been established, 1-800-CALL-FBI. Now I'd like to introduce the Governor of Maryland, Governor Larry Hogan. Governor, thank you. Well, thank you very much for being here today. Um, my, first of all, I want to thank Sheriff Tim Cameron and his incredible team at the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Department who uh, responded in an incredible way with the support of um, law enforcement agencies from neighboring jurisdictions in Calvert County and Charles County together with state police. And we've got ATF and FBI here. This has been a terrific joint effort. I also want to thank all of the first responders who did an incredible job. And um, I think everybody went above and beyond the uh, call of duty in this particular incident. It's tragic. Um, our, our hearts um, are broken and we're extremely mm -hmm. saddened and our thoughts and prayers are always with um, the victims, all of the students and their families. Um, you know, no parent should ever have to um, worry about when they send their kids off in the morning to school, whether they're going to come home safely or not. And uh, we need more than prayers. Um, I want to thank these first responders and law enforcement officers for the job they did, but we need more. We've got to take action. Um, we've got one of the um, most aggressive school safety plans in America that we introduced several weeks ago as emergency legislation in Annapolis. And the legislatures failed to take action on it. We put $125 million into school safety, $50 million a year into additional school resource officers like the great deputy sheriff that saved further people from being um, injured and killed today. Um, but not every school has that opportunity. Um, and uh, more, more, more mental health counselors. So it's a tragedy. We're going to continue to support law enforcement um, at every level. All of our first responders, we're going to be here for the community. Um, we're going to be here for the families and the children at Great Mills High School. 
Um, and we're going to try to get something done in Annapolis. We've only got uh, less than three weeks left in the legislative session. And to me, it's outrageous that we haven't taken action yet on something so important as school safety. But we're going to fight to make sure it gets done, and we hope you will help us do that. Thank you. Governor, uh, gun, gun uh, violence has been at the top of your administration since you've been in office. Uh, what can you tell Marylanders to assure them that hopefully this will not happen again in a Maryland school? Well, I wish I could tell you that it's not going to happen again. Unfortunately, I you know, won't be able to give you that guarantee, but I know that we have legislation to make it tougher on anyone that commits a crime with a gun. I know we have uh, legislation to make it tougher and longer sentences for people that re are repeat violent offenders. Um, and we've got, uh, you know, I'm supporting legislation for the red flag legislation to take the guns out of the hands of the mentally ill or people that are having issues. Um, I've always said we've got to keep guns uh, out of the hands of the mental mentally ill and people with uh, criminal records. Um, and we need these school safety resources, but it's going to take everybody working together because um, nobody should ever have to, another, no community should ever have to go through this again. Well, you know, we're just getting all the facts, but I had the opportunity to talk with Sheriff Cameron, and it sure sounds like this is exactly the way it should have been handled. I had a very capable school resources officer that also happened to be a SWAT team member. Uh, this is a tough guy who apparently uh, closed in very quickly and took the right kind of action. And, and I think uh, while there's, it's still tragic, he may have saved other people's lives. Um, so Sheriff, Sheriff. Sheriff. Thank you. Excuse me, Dr. Smith, please. Yep. Thank you. I'd like to introduce you. I'd like to introduce Dr. Scott Smith, Superintendent for St. Mary's County Public School. Um, uh, it is fairly overwhelming, the response that we've had uh, as a result of the incident this morning. And it's wonderful to be joined by so many people and to really engage in this conversation. Uh, what we had this morning is truly our worst fear, our worst fear, our parents' worst fear. There's no way around it. Principal Heibel, who's over there, Dr. Heibel, he is not only the principal of the school, he's also a parent. We evacuated the kids from that school to Leonardtown High School, where I am a parent. We got contact from Chopticon High School, where Tim Cameron, Sheriff Cameron, is a parent. This is our greatest fear. And so today, it's in the sheriff's hands while we investigate, while we try to understand why what happened, what happened, and to walk through the process. We evacuated almost 1,400 students from that school to Leonardtown. We are only halfway through the reunification process with their parents. I went and spoke to both groups, and I said, please be patient. This takes time. We have to check every one of your children to make sure that they are OK to make sure that we have resources in place that when they get home they know that they can reach out to somebody. This is just the beginning of a very long and tragic process that we will go through in St. Mary's County and we have done all that we're supposed to do. We have a fantastic working relationship. We communicate often. It looks as though the SRO did exactly what the SRO is trained to do and yet we still have tragic loss of life. We still have somebody in critical condition. And we have students at the school and staff at the school impacted. Dr. Smith, do you know when Great Mills High School will be opened up again? So I can tell you this: um, we, you know, we've we all the students have been safely removed from Great Mills High School and they're be, being reunited with their parents. We hope that that's concluded within the next hour or two. We will then meet with staff at the school. We are definitely going to have Great Mills High School closed for tomorrow. We know we're also anticipating inclement weather. Um, so that may impact as well. And then we'll get together to see um, whether or not we can reopen this week. I, we, we may be close till the end of the week. We have to talk to the adults. We had several firsthand witnesses of the event. These were all children. Um, it is an exceptionally tragic day. It's an incredibly important conversation. I ask that we all stay informed. If you don't think this can't happen at your school, you are sadly mistaken. We are shaken, but we are very strong in St. Mary's. This is an incredible community. I know our parents will come together. I know our kids will come together. And hopefully, on the other side of this, 
be stronger, and make good decisions to keep our kids safe every single day. Dr. Smith, one more question, and that is a lot of parents wondering across the country, but in your case, in St. Mary's County Schools, how is it that a student could walk into the school with a handgun, and do you anticipate now in the aftermath that something will change with your school system? I know that there's been conversations. We've had two community conversations about school safety after the shooting in Florida. One of the things we've talked about are metal detectors in schools. There is an, an, an associated cost related to that as well as staff. That has been the conversation. The schools do not have metal detectors in St. Mary's County. Dr. Smith, does this student have a prior disciplinary history? I can't, I, 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 won't, I won't speak to the particular motives. I leave that to Sheriff Cameron and his investigation. Sheriff, can you tell us anything more about the relationship that. between the shooter and the female student who said, who led you to that information with one of their parents? So our detectives in their interviews subsequent to the event this morning have determined that there was a prior relationship, the extent of which I can't comment on at, at this time. Um, so we, we know that. Um, and whether that factored in as a motive in this, I can't confirm that either at this time. Sheriff, were there other threats to the school in the past few weeks before this incident? We had a spate of uh, social media threats that were all over the state of Maryland. Um, we responded locally, uh, appropriately, I believe, but it, it was a, a whole spate of those hoax threats throughout the state. Sure, and sure. I also your this. school resource deputy. Uh, how, is, how is he doing? Um, obviously, you guys are talking with him as well. Uh, and do you believe his actions saved thousands or hundreds of students in that school? So he, he was unharmed. Uh, and he responded exactly as we train our personnel to respond. And I'm sure right now, uh, in the aftermath of this, um, he's doing well and we're gonna do everything to support and, and promote him and his well-being. Um, but you have to understand the situation that he responded in. These are children, as Dr. Smith said. And so is I'm there, sure that weighs is, on is his there mind. Is any indication as to where the uh, shooter might have gotten the gun? Where did that come from? So that's part and parcel to our investigation. Uh, our detectives, and again, there are multiple crime scenes, I, I said earlier, which includes a car, social media, technology, and the home of the shooter. Um, and so we're working to determine that. Uh, the ATF has uh, initiated an emergency trace on the gun. As you can see, assembled here is uh, quite a collection of my colleagues and leadership. And, and this is certainly an issue that has been prominent locally and nationally so and and we're in the throngs as you know of conversation locally about our process safety and security in our schools and how to improve that sure can you say approximately how long from first shot to last shot this incident took yeah so that was a exact question i asked of our uh, criminal investigation commander uh and and so what it looks like it's less than minutes uh, my my guess is uh, less than a minute from, from the time, just, I just want to be totally clear. From yes. the time the student shot to the time the school resource officer shot, less than a minute? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking seconds, you know, but less than a minute. Definitely less than a Sheriff minute. Cameron, I'd like to speak that uh, my name is Jerome Anthony Chase, and I'm a resident of St. Mary's County. Been here 55 years. I had a run in with the laws here. Uh, in the last four months, I've been involved with the high schools here uh, about what the mentoring program they have here. In the Ren and the Renner County and uh, Charles County, also PG County, program is very recognized. Uh, unfortunately, they do have the program here in the high schools here in St. Mary's that's not really recognized. I want to know what, if any, uh, is the, the uh, Sheriff's Department and the State Police Department of St. Mary's County with their involvement with that program. With a mentoring program? Yes. Well, I, I would think that it would be incumbent upon us now to talk to you more about it. I know that our SROs, uh, part and parcel of their job is to be a mentor for our young people not just someone that's armed and in so, the school. Uh, are you familiar with, uh, like the brother here was saying like four, three months ago that it was a shooting was supposed to take place at Great Mills High School? And uh, I believe that the uh, sheriffs went in and investigated and your know, outcome, I don't know, but uh, do you think that the day that they had anything to do with that incident? No, I don't. Sheriff, do you have Sheriff, school surveillance video? And if so, how many cameras may have been on it? We do have school surveillance video. Um, it is evidence now in, in this criminal <laughs> investigation. Um, I have not personally viewed it. I know that our criminal investigation division commander who's here with me has viewed it. And I, do, I don't know how many cameras. Sure. At least two, one at least thing, two that I know. Just to clarify one thing, Tim, that was said earlier. Uh, it appears the shooter did have, or at least at one point, had a relationship with the girl. Yes. Uh, 
So are we working with the premise that that was the, the motive that sparked this? And the other individual that got shot, was he involved in this or was he just happened to be a, a, an unlucky bystander? Yeah, I think, uh, and I don't want to guess to where the investigation will take us. But could, could you say, was the girl targeted? Well, again, there was a, there was a relationship prior to this event. And so to the extent of how that shaped this event, that's what we're going to have to determine. Sheriff, the, Sheriff, the, the fatal, fatal, wound, the fatal <laughs> wound to the shooter, did that come from the SRO's gun? Did he take him down and, and kill him? So that, again, is what we're going to have to determine through a very detailed investigation. Again, when the SRO fired, uh, the suspect, uh, as described to me, fired almost simultaneously. Did he fire at the... SRO, or did he fire at himself? That, uh, that I don't know. Sheriff, is the suspect family cooperating? As far as I know, yes. Can you spell yes. his name? I, I'll make sure that's provided to you. Sheriff, can you talk about how often the SROs are trained in situations like this, and is it mandated by the district? So, uh, as an agency, we went agency-wide and re redefined and refined our response to active assailants from the notion of a three- or four-man diamond response to a single officer response. And along with that, everyone in the agency was trained. We used a brand new elementary school in cooperation with our Board of Education, and every officer was trained uh, on a 12-hour training day. In addition to that, um, every member of the agency is now equipped with an individual first aid kit and combat medicine training. And that is uh, redone every time that they go to the range. They reapply bandages and tourniquets because we know that saves lives. Uh, and part of the firearms training is individual or fundamental aspects of a response to an active shooter. It's taught in our academy, and we do it in in-service as well. And Dr. Smith could talk chapter and verse and what they've done in the schools, in this school year alone, in training staff uh, and teachers in the schools. Sheriff, what kind of gun did he have? That. I'm sorry. How much ammunition the did he have? Family, Sheriff, are you able to tell us if not only are they cooperating, but did they, were there any warning signs that they told detectives? So we haven't found any pre-incident signs as of yet, either uh, on social media or any other evidence. Um, I know that we're out at the, the shooter's home. We may determine something there that um, will shed light onto this event. Uh, your question was about a handgun. It was a, sem a Glock semi-automatic handgun. I don't know. Um, how much ammunition was in it, whether there was, I don't know the extent beyond that. So how many SROs are in Great Hills High School? One. Just There's one. one SRO assigned to each of our high schools. And no, Sheriff, I know it's too early to, no. I know it's too early to characterize this entire incident, but you seem to be painting a picture of a domestic issue. What we're hearing from witnesses is that this was really targeted at this young lady, and this was not a random shooting, and that he did that, and then took off. The SRO and pursuit. Can yes. Well, I did. Um, yeah. Again, uh, this individual produced a gun and shot this female student. Whether the motive was in, to simply shoot her and that was the motive and no more, we may or may not ever know that. What we do know is the SRO did his job, engaged, and stopped the potential threat. So beyond that, we just may not have an answer. It may be, it may not be a random event. That may be his intent, but then we're guessing. And of course, beyond his intent, what was he going to do beyond that? We, we simply today don't know that answer, Sir, and we may never know. Sir, so. Just one more question after this, and then we're going to cut this, okay? I don't believe there's any connection. You know, it was just three or four months ago when the incident occurred, it was what I don't on, on so no I don't believe there's any connection question, I've answered that before the incident that you described that you asked me yep. about was a social media post which was a hoax and no I don't believe there's any connection sir we can talk to you after this yeah. we're only going to take one more question, question for for this. Governor, Hogan. Uh, Governor you, you talked about legislation 
uh, in the Maryland State House. Are you happy with what President Trump and Congress is doing nationally in terms of legislation? No, it's why we decided to move forward at the state level. And uh, we, you know, some one of the discussions earlier was uh, we were going to put $125 million into making our schools safer. That would include metal detectors for the schools that can't afford them, like St. Mary's County, and it would include uh, school resource officers for the counties that don't have uh, the, the great program that they have here in St. Mary's County, along with mental health counselors and cameras and other things. Governor, what opposition are you running up against in, in Annapolis? What's, what's the you know, uh, I can't imagine, uh, given the school safety crisis that we're dealing with in America, that how anyone could vote against additional school safety measures. So we're hopeful. Are you calling for a vote? We're, uh, it's emergency legislation. We expected it to be done a few weeks ago. We're going to keep pushing for the last 19 days of the session. Sure, sure. sure. Congress uh, they should act time, also. Garrett's question, my colleague. The timeline, just so we've all got to be very, very clear. You were saying seconds between the time that the shooter student comes into school, shoots the female, the male, and then engages with the SRO and may or may not have committed suicide? Uh, can you walk me through the exact timeline of that just for the record stand? Yeah, so approximately 7.55 a.m. Um, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. What, what we understand is that the, the shooter uh, shot the female student and then the SRO responded and engaged. That appears to be, as described to me, less than a minute. It could be seconds. So, and then the second part of your question, as to whether or not the shooter committed suicide, that is a potential. As I described, when the SRO fired that shot, um, there was a, a shot also fired by the suspect or the shooter. Um, and Chris pointed out there is video, so obviously that's evidence that we will examine very closely and be able to determine, I hope, then, specific to those events. And then do we know determine which, the, shot hurt, uh, which shot wounded the 14-year-old? Who's gone? Who shot, wounded the 14-year-old? No, not at this point. It could have been the deputy gun. Is that behind it? Well, those are the possibilities that this investigation will determine. Where was the 14-year-old? Where was he in the vicinity? On the shooter's side or on the deputy side? I know that he was in the hallway. I don't know specifically where he was in the hallway. All right, we're going to go ahead and conclude this.